Hi there. Today you'll be doing an exercise on water quality testing. Why is water quality such an important factor? Well, simply because good water quality is essential for living things to thrive. Now, the most common standards used to assess water quality is based on the health of the ecosystems as well as safety for human contact and drinking. Well, what do you think about the water quality here? Does it support life? Let's find out. Here are the things you'll need for your water quality testing exercise. First, you will need a pail with a nylon rope firmly attached. Then, you will need a water quality testing kit which contains an instructional booklet, a colour chart, a sachi disc, a thermometer strip, two types of tablets, a pH tablet as well as a DO tablet, two types of test tubes, a large one and a small one. And the last apparatus you will need is a salinometer which helps you measure the amount of dissolved salt in a given solution. So, now that you have all your apparatus ready, let's start with the testing. So now, I'll show you how to collect water from the reservoir. But first, you will need to tie the nylon rope firmly to the railing so that the pail doesn't drop into the reservoir. Gently lower the pail into the reservoir. Now slowly lift it up. So, there you go, a pail of collected water. To test for debris and smell, first, fill up the container with the water you have collected and then observe what is on the surface of the water as well as in the water and then give it a smell test. Water on its own does not have any smell, so any kind of smell or odour coming from the water could indicate its pollution sources. For instance, if you see a shiny film on the surface of the water and smell oil, it could mean there's an oil spill. If you smell mud, it could mean there's silt. And if you smell something musty, it could mean there's algae. Colour can give some indication about what may be present in the water. There could be dissolved pollutants or even bacteria. However, coloured water does not always mean that there's pollution in the water. The colour of the waters from our reservoirs or waterways should be colourless or slightly green due to algae which is normal. To test for colour of water, hold it up in a well-lit area and check for the colour. Turbid or murky brown colouration indicates soil particles in the water or resuspension from the bottom of the banks of the reservoir. Brown or dark brown colouration indicates brown pigments from leaves called tannins which are dissolved in the water. A green or yellow coloration indicates that algae is suspended in the water and it could also indicate there's an algae bloom, usually caused by high nutrients, fertilizers or organic matter in the water. Turbid or murky grey or black indicates the water is polluted. Stability measures the clarity or level of murkiness of the water. It also means there are particles suspended in the water such as organic matter or silt. Stability impacts the amount of light that can penetrate through the water and this in turn affects aquatic ecosystems and vital processes such as respiration, photosynthesis and even reproduction of aquatic life. To measure turbidity, first you need to paste the sachi disc into the white jar. Place it a little off-center like this. Then fill it up with the water you've collected just now up to the fill line. Place the colour chart to the top part of the jar and then compare the colour of the saturdays to the chart given. And then take your reading in JTU or the Jackson Turbidity Unit. Temperature measures how hot or cold the water is. And this is an important factor because it affects the level of dissolved oxygen, photosynthesis as well as the food supply. When the water is too hot or too cold, it would definitely have an adverse effect on the fishes as well as the aquatic plants. Usually, the temperature of water varies with the weather conditions as well as the time of sampling. To measure air temperature, hold up the thermometer strip and observe. The number lighted in green indicates the air temperature. To measure water temperature, put the thermometer strip into the water. Remove the thermometer strip from the water and the number lighted in green indicates the water temperature. Dissolved oxygen refers to the amount of oxygen dissolved in a given volume of water at a given temperature 
and an atmospheric pressure. The minimum amount needed to support aquatic life is 4 mg per litre. Fill the small test tube with the collected water to the brim. Ensure that there are no air bubbles visible before inserting the two tablets for dissolved oxygen testing. Gently cover the bottle with the black cap to avoid spillage. Continuously shake the bottle for 10 minutes to dissolve the dissolved oxygen tablets and for the chemical to react. After 10 minutes, observe the colour of the collected water in the small test tube. Compare the colour against the dissolved oxygen chart provided and find the nearest shade which indicates the level of dissolved oxygen in the collected water. Water that contains less than 4 mg per litre of dissolved oxygen is too low to support aquatic life. The optimum level should be 6 mg per litre and above. pH measures how alkaline or acidic the water is. It is usually measured from a range of 0 to 14. 0 being the most acidic, 7 being the neutral, and 14 being the most alkaline. First, remove the cap of the large test tube and fill it up with the collected water sample up to the 10 mm mark. And then, insert one pH tablet into it. Cover the test tube with the transparent cap Continuously shake the test tube for 5 minutes to dissolve the pH tablet and for the chemical to react. After 5 minutes, observe the colour of the collected water in the test tube. Compare the colour against the pH chart provided and find the nearest shade which indicates the pH value of the collected water. The range should be between 6.5 to 8.2. Salinity refers to the amount of dissolved salt in the water. Different types of aquatic life thrive at different levels of salinity. The salinity level here should be below 0.5 parts per thousand. This is because it is a fresh water system and not brackish. To test for salinity, use the salinometer. Fill it up to the brim with the collected water sample. Ensure that there are no air bubbles in the meter by gently tapping on the container. Then, take the reading of the lever arrow. Fresh water should be between 0 to 0 0.5 ppt, brackish between 0 0.5 to 28 ppt, sea water between 28 to 35 ppt, dead sea between 34 to 300 ppt. We have now come to the end of our water quality testing exercise and we hope that you can help keep our waters clean by not polluting or littering in our waterways. And together, let's learn how to conserve, value and enjoy our waters. We hope you've enjoyed this water quality testing exercise. Hope to see you again. Thank you and goodbye.